looks like. Real quick, um, um, yes, brother sir. Sharif, because I know um, you are um, you you you're the um, Moore Science Temple. What are you, the Moore Science Temple? What now? The I'm the National Press Secretary for the Moore Science Temple of America Incorporated. Right. So in, in your slide, you just mentioned the beginning of the African transatlantic slave trade. Um, I'm not I don't go too deep into the Moors thing. Right. But don't the Moors deny the transatlantic slave trade? No, don't sir, they, absolutely. No, not. absolutely. Then, not. Now, now, let's just I'm glad you brought that up. Let's clear some things up. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of cleanup that the Moors Science Symbol of America and the Moorish movement proper has to do with a lot of things. Mm -hmm. that now are being passed on as Moorish history. Okay? okay? We do not deny the African transatlantic slave trade. We do not do that. Okay? We do what we do deny is the narrative that it's given. So what ends up happening with people is just is just a tendency of you of of humanity, of human frailty is that we always tend to throw the baby out with the bathwater when we see something wrong. Okay. Yes, we get do. it. So yeah. we'll say, oh, well, I don't believe in religion, right? No, what we're really saying, if we're to be accurate, is we don't believe in what we were told by our former slave master is religion. <laughs> okay. Got you. Got you see you. what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Okay. That, so we end, and we end up throwing the baby out with the bathwater instead of, instead of recognizing the fact that we were never taught true religion to begin with. Mm -hmm. All right. So here we go. Narrative, proper narrative on the African transatlantic slave trade. Everyone look up. Don't take my word for it. You all know, you know, I, I strive to give everybody receipts. Look up Pope Eugene the Fourth. The year was 1442. The papal bull or order that he gave is called Ilius Que. That's I-L-L-U-S-Q-U-I. This papal bull authorized the Portuguese military order of Christ to begin raids on the west coast of Africa. And they called it a new crusade against the Moors. Mm. So the whole African transatlantic slave trade began as warfare, people, not mm -hmm. as commerce. Mm -hmm. And it is this piece of history that reconnects us here to our ancient history directly and not in a general sense. It's direct. Mm -hmm. okay. It's direct. The African yeah. transatlantic slave trade years, some people say, well, the Moors helped the Europeans with the slave trade. That's not true. That, that did not happen. The slave trade was targeting the Moorish Empire. Dr. Ben himself, Dr. Yosef Ben Yakinen says himself in a number of his books that the first so-called African slaves in the Americas came from Spain, not the African continent. Mm, interesting. See, they came from Spain, people. Mm -hmm. Again, that's our connection. See, that's what's being reconnected. That, that, is, that is how... It's these pieces of hidden information of secret history that reconnect us directly to our past. Yes, we are connected to the ancient Egyptians, but according to GM James, it was by way of our Moorish ancestry. Mm -hmm. See, we are connected to Egypt, but that's how we're connected to Egypt because we inherited ancient Egyptian technology. Okay, the, the whole production of monoatomic gold reached Europe and Europeans by way of us. That's how it that's how it reached it. That's how it fell into the hands of the secret societies and the secret alchemical orders. Because they are the recipients and the custodians of our old world science. Next slide. What are monoatomic elements? Now let's talk. Now we see. Now I want see again. I want the audience to know what this thing is really about and what it is. And and just because we're talking quantum physics and physics terminology doesn't mean that we can't understand it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to explain it to where we all can get it. What are monoatomic elements? 
They are alchemically transformed non-metal elements. So yes, it is pure gold, but so pure that it's not even a metal anymore. This is very important. I've had a number of people ask me, okay, well, what about colloidal silver? Okay, that's something different. What about colloidal gold? That's something different. Colloids are small particles of the metal itself. Okay? Monoatomic elements are not metal anymore. So when the alchemical, the secret alchemical tradition, when they talk about changing base metals into gold, what they're really talking about scientifically is changing the metal state of the element to a purified powdered form. That's what would, I mean, I'm literally exposing secret alchemical knowledge by talking about this. Mm -hmm. All right. Because that what I just did was decode what they say. Changing base metals into gold is really changing a substance from its rude, rough state to its refined state. The white powder gold is refined. Refined to where it's no longer even a metal. All right. In this state, it's, it's either scientifically transmuted, and I'm going to explain how, or it's precipitated from naturally occurring sources. Remember I had mentioned before about the Qumran area, right, where the Essenes had their, 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 their dwelling, where, where their, where their um, headquarters was? It's right next to the Dead Sea. One of the most abundant natural sources of monoatomic gold is the Dead Sea. The salt in the Dead Sea is 70% monoatomic gold. <clears throat> to this day, this is one of the most popular places to precipitate, one of the most popular sources to precipitate your own monoatomic gold. Okay. Hey, uh, Go ahead. Brother, brother Sharif. Yep. The um, the cocaine mummies when they find the mummies with all this cocaine, yes, sir. is that really cocaine or is that this white monatomic substance that you're talking about? Oh no no no, that was cocaine. But that you was know, cocaine. And, and, but it's related. Now now follow me, that was cocaine. Mm -hmm. But and 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 but how does it relate to this topic? I'm gonna show you how it relates to this topic. The fact that they found cocaine in the hair follicles of mummies that were thousands of years old. And the only place on the planet you can get that is in Central and South America. <laughs> mm -hmm. It totally destroys the white supremacist ideal of isolationism. Mm -hmm. It destroys it. It shows that for at least 10,000 years, mm -hmm. there was cross-cultural interaction mm -hmm. on both sides of the Atlantic. Yeah. Guess what another huge natural source of monoatomic gold is or where it's found? It's found yeah. in um, um, Moab, Utah, mm. the Great Salt Lake in Utah, which is close to what, people? It's close to the Grand Canyon. Mm. The Grand Canyon, we already know, has there's parts of it that would be considered the Egypt of the West. Mm -hmm. All right, which is why certain areas of it are closed off and highly monitored and protected, and you can't even go there. Mm -hmm. Which is why, you know, the some of you already know this in the late 1800s or the, or the mid 1800s, the Smithsonian Institute hired G.E. Kincaid to go survey the area. And he surveys the area with his partners and then says, oh, yeah, we found this and we found that. We found we found Egyptian uh, mummies and we found Egyptian hieroglyphs and we found Egyptian statues and we found. OK, there you go. Mm. All right. So back on the slide. Possesses um, the monoatomic elements possess what we call exotic matter properties. What is an exotic matter? What is exotic matter? According to, um, well, there's a couple of scientists that say this, but this one particular scientist, Hal Puthoff. Hal Puthoff 
right, describes exotic matter as matter that exists in multiple dimensions simultaneously, people. Simultaneously. And because it exists in multiple dimensions simultaneously, it has the ability to manipulate space time. Mm. All right, let's go. It functions as a gateway separating dimensions. The scientific term, you can look it up, is called a Compton radius vortex. That's the quantum physics terminology for what I just mentioned. Also, too, exotic matter is a room temperature superconduct uh, superconductor. Basically, free energy or access to what we would call zero point or what they also call over unity. Okay, this is important stuff. Transformative process. In other words, how this thing is made. Metal is first, like let's take a sample of gold, it's first subject to firing by a high energy electric arc for at least 300 seconds. The nucleus, what happens with this high energy state, the nucleus of the gold atoms elongate to form what they call dumbbell atoms. Please people, take a screenshot of the slide and, and then look up some of this stuff yourself to verify what I'm saying. The dumbbell atoms, Right, then the nucleus then flexes the under the high under under the, the 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 high energy state. The nucleus flexes and it brings the electrons within proximity of each end of the nucleus. Right, and this is called the high spin state. And then the electrons join to form what's called a Cooper pairing. That's another term you need to understand and look up. They form Cooper pairings. Now, for an element like gold to form um, a monoatomic state, it has to be an even number of electrons. If it's an odd number, then it forms what we call a fermion. All right. The Cooper pairings then form when they, when the, in other words, when those electrons match up with each other, they form the Cooper pairings. That now forms what we call a Bose-Einstein condensate. That's another thing you need to look up if you want to understand what monoatomic gold is and its properties. The Bose-Einstein condensate forms what's called a Compton radius vortex. That's another term you need to know. What is a Compton radius vortex? It's literally a miniature wormhole. What's a wormhole, people? A wormhole is a two-way miniature black hole. That's what it is. Meaning a doorway from one reality to another reality. That's what it is. And the Bose-Einstein condensate generates what we call a Meisner field. So you need to familiarize yourself with these terms. Meisner field, Cooper pairing. Bose-Einstein condensate and Compton radius vortex. Familiarize yourself with those terms, people. Next slide. All right. This is a Meisner field. Or, or this, what we're talking about now is what a Meisner field is, the properties and the qualities of a Meisner field. Anything within a Meisner field is quantum entangled with any other thing within any other Meisner field anywhere in the universe. In quantum physics, this is called the quantum coherent state. Einstein called it spooky action at a distance. In other words, go ahead, go ahead. what were you gonna say, bro? Oh, okay. Spooky action at a distance, meaning if something is quantum entangled, Let's say I'm quantum entangled with Brother Rich right now. We're in two different physical locations. That means anything I do or say or think right now, Brother Rich immediately knows. Immediately. No barrier, no time or distance barrier will exist. Okay? A Meisner field repels a magnetic field. 
A Meisner field generates room temperature superconductivity. A Meisner field straddles dimensions. As a matter of fact, experiments have shown that, that monoatomic gold, four-ninths of its weight is no longer in three dimensions. <laughs> Which is one of the reasons why we, we, when, we, when we produce it, we suspend it in water. It's one of the reasons. All right. It facilitates physical scaffolding for consciousness. In other words, it becomes the means by which consciousness is transduced from the higher dimensions down to three dimensions by way of our brain and connective tissue. So it's physical scaffolding for consciousness and biologic information communication. In other words, it is how DNA gets the information to repair itself. Hmm. It's identical in properties. Now, this is one, you know, some of the people that are involved in esoteric and the occult orders are going to really like. It's identical in properties to what we call the magical circle of conjuration in old world ritual magic. In old world ritual magic, the magical circle is called the field of operations. And within the field of operations, all points in time and space are connected. Next slide. All right, we talked about how monoatomic gold or monoatomic elements, right, facilitate transduction of human consciousness from the higher planes into three dimensions. So there's a high concentration of monoatomic elements in brain tissue and human connective tissue. This is deep. Let me say that again, people. Your body already has a network of monoatomic elements in it. If it didn't, you'd be dead. All right. Monoatomic elements facilitate the link between the plane of manifest or the three-dimensional plane and the higher planes. Connective tissue, information conduction from the biogenic field is thousands of times faster than neural conduction. In other words, in other words, the information that comes into our bodies by way of the monoatomic elements outstrips the neural speed by thousands of times. It's thousands of times faster. All right. And it's in a gel sol binary state in our connective tissue. What do we mean by gel sol binary state? Zeros and ones zeros and ones. In other words, it is the matrix in your body. The quantum operator, we talked about that before in quantum physics, quantum mechanics, you need something that compels probability to coalesce into an actual physical event. That is called the quantum operator. Conscious input can alter the wave function at the higher realms to collapse it into an event. The human will, belief, is the quantum operator. So those that regularly take monoatomic gold, every time you do it, you set a solid intention before you do. Resolution or the setting of intention firmly activates the quantum operator. We talked about that formula in certain secret orders, to know, to dare, to will, and to be silent. And it requires the development of the power of will over simple wishing. Belief is not a thought that the mind possesses, it's a thought that possesses the mind. And ancient technology that would enable this in an accelerated fashion, trance states, 
ecstatic states of mind brought on by music, song, dance, etc. This is all spiritual technology. Next slide. We've gone over this before. If you don't have this book in your library, you absolutely need to have this book in your library. Cutting edge scientific descriptions of the plane of soul and the seven ether planes. I was asked the question before, a couple of people have asked me. They're like, Brother Sharif, how can you know all of these things, but you belong to a religious organization? My answer is my religious doctrine speaks to all of this stuff. And it directs my consciousness to further research in these directions. I have to say that it was my religious organization that sent me in the directions that I went for this research. So in the title of this chapter,